Mare Island Naval Shipyard, or MINS, is located along the western edge of the city of Vallejo in Northern California, approximately 30 miles northeast of San Francisco. Established by the U.S. Navy in 1853, it is the oldest base on the west coast. The island is made up of 4,351 acres, of which 2,500 were used for naval activity. The Navy utilized the property primarily as a shipyard, created in 1854, but also situated an ammunition depot, a hospital, later converting to training facilities, and a marine barracks on the island. The original purpose for Mare Island Naval Shipyard, as stated by the U.S. Navy, was to maintain, overhaul, and refuel ships, including nuclear-powered vessels, provide logistical support for ships and service craft, and provide services and materials for other Navy functions. Over MIN's long years of service, 512 ships were constructed and hundreds more repaired. The first ship built at MIN's was a Civil War paddle-wheeled gunboat, Saginaw, launched in 1859. During World War II, shipyard workers set a still unbroken record for the construction of the USS Ward, a destroyer, from keel laying to launching in only 17 and a half days. Subsequent to the Ward, workers constructed 17 submarines, four sub-tenders, 31 destroyer escorts, 33 small craft, and more than 300 landing craft. The 1960s saw the building of nuclear submarines, the first of which was the USS Sargo, and the last, the USS Drum, launched during the Vietnam War. In 1993, the Department of Defense recommended closure of MINS. Operational closure was completed in April of 1996. The long history of military and shipyard activity on Mare Island generated an extremely large amount of hazardous waste that required remediation. Metal plating, repair of lead acid batteries, abrasive blasting, discharge of contaminated wastewater, landfill creation, and disposal of solvents PCBs, contaminated fluids, and asbestos were all performed at various locales on Mare Island. Other environmentally problematic enterprises from the island's past included disposal of contraband and detonation of projectiles, warheads, and explosives. Soil, groundwater, and dredge ponds have all been impacted by improper disposal, with the western part of the island found to be highly contaminated with hazardous, toxic, and radioactive waste. Over 85,000 cubic yards of soil contaminated with PCBs, pesticides, lead-based paint, asbestos, and petroleum fuels were ultimately consolidated on site. Remediation put a total of 2,800 acres of the island back into use, with eight acres of new wetland constructed to replace contaminated wetland. Additional remediation cleaned up metal contamination and solvents from the shipyard, and lead-based paint and asbestos that were the, in the existing buildings on the island. Over 400 transformer sites, 75 underground storage tanks, and underground fuel and utility lines required abatement as well. The detrimental effect of the hazardous waste on Mare Island was also felt by its workers. Because the shipyard industry uses many products that contain asbestos, workers were routinely exposed to the substance, often on a long-term, close-range basis. Many lawsuits brought by retired naval shipyard workers are currently at bar or on appeal in the San Francisco Superior Court and in Alameda County, California. Although no longer commissioned as a naval base, Mare Island has not lain idle. Hollywood came knocking for use of island buildings and locations, most notably the movies Jack with Robin Williams and Bill Cosby in 1995, Sphere and Metro with Eddie Murphy in 1996, and Flubber in 1997. After remediation was completed, local and state officials hoped to find beneficial use of Mare Island. Currently, a master plan community is under development for industrial, retail, and residential properties. Thank you for watching. This video was produced by asbestos.net, a leading resource on all aspects of asbestos and mesothelioma. Our priority is to inform victims about the devastating effects of asbestos exposure, mesothelioma, asbestos cancer, asbestosis, and other asbestos-related diseases, and to advise them with a wealth of information. 
Individuals whose lives have been touched by mesothelioma have numerous questions and concerns. Their caregivers and family members also need accurate, reliable information. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos cancer and need more information, we invite you to visit and explore the thousands of pages of oncologist-reviewed material on asbestos.net, to call our convenient toll-free number shown below and speak with a mesothelioma specialist, or to use the simple contact form found at asbestos.net to request a free copy of our informative books, custom inserts, and DVD. Asbestos.net information and help for patients and families.